All right. Thank you so much for that lovely song that hits home for me. Shalom. Magandang umaga sa inyo na nanonood sa AMCM. Uh, it's good to be back. Ganun din sa Mac. At sa kanamang bahagi ng Pilipinas. To the rest of the world watching right now, good day to you as well. This is a philosophical, theological, and practical exposition of Pauline models of Christian life. Ang pagpapaliwanag ko ay sa wikang English, ngunit wikang Filipino naman ang aking gagamitin upang palawakin ang aking mga kuntos. Our main passage is in 2 Timothy 2.15, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Some of the details here are taken from Paul, a biography from the famous New Testament scholar, Tom Wright. The Apostle Paul, who was the man behind the text? Paul negotiates his way through tensions between Greco-Roman, Jewish, and Christian influences. You can read that in Acts and in Colossians. He targets his former colleagues in the Sanhedrin and the ordinary Jew, also the Roman citizens, as well as the Gnostics, Cynics, Stoics, and Epicureans. That is why the Apostle Due to Tarsus, Paul's birthplace, rivaling Athens as the center of philosophy at that time. Philosophers such as Philo, Seneca, and Cicero are his contemporaries, who may at some point have informed. The Yen Aristotle have been slogans or household bywords in Paul's era. Marahil kay Bishu na nagtatagong ka na ba bakit uh, pinag-aralan natin ngayon ang philosophy. Hindi may wasan na si Saul na naging Paul ay philosophically framed by the Greeks and by the Romans. Actually, yung mga Romans they only adopted. Uh, the way of thinking, living from the Greeks. Obviously, the New Testament ay nasusulat sa wikang Griego. At kasama sa wika ang kultura, ang pag-iisip, parang sa Philippines, di ba yung English? Hindi mo lang pinag-aaralan yung uh, the English language. Aalamin mo rin ang patungkol sa pinanggalingan ito. So, um, Marahil from the United Kingdom, pero sa Philippines nga, uh, very Americanized. So, well, versed tayo sa American culture, American way of thinking, American writers, American education. So, isipin mo si Paul, yung soul. Uh, habang lumalaki siya sa Tarsus, being second center of philosophy in the first century, ay hindi niya maiwasan na mabasa ang mga panulat ni Socrates, ni Plato, ni Aristotle habang lumalaki siya at pag-uusapan natin yan uh, sa mga susunod nating talakayan. Uh, kaya nga uh, gusto kong ibahagi sa iyo, um, you might be surprised that Paul directly quoted from famous contemporary philosophers in his time. 
at mababasa mo mismo yon sa Biblia, word for word, na kinuha niya ito sa mga Greek philosophers. Uh, kaya ako binabahagi ito para maintindihan natin ang mundo ng ni Apostle Paul, kung paano siya lumaki, paano siya nag-aral, namuhay, nangaral, and then later on become the Apostle Paul. In Paul's attempt to redefine the role of a worker, teacher, soldier, athlete, and servant within the Christian parameter, I would focus more on the philosophical facets that informed his presentation, as we can see in Acts 17.28. Nasaan ba si Apostol Pablo dito? Sa Aklat ng Gawa 17. Nasa Athens. <laughs> Center of Greek philosophy. At hindi siya maaring makipag-engage into a discussion kung wala siyang kaalaman sa Roman a Greco-Roman philosophies, not to promote philosophy itself, but to use philosophy to introduce the gospel. After all, the fundamental task of philosophical reflection is the construction of oneself. Existential question is inevitable. This, however, does not override the overarching theme in Pauline epistles about the end time vision of the union of heaven and earth depicted in Jesus Christ being the son of God as well as the son of man. We will then deal with the questions, what does it mean to be a worker in the first century Mediterranean region? and how it is reconfigured in light of following Jesus. For probably had in mind a Jewish laborer, because we're talking about a worker as a model of Christian life. If this is the case, then it's reasonable to follow through with this Jewish connection. Sakari Hokinen, a New Testament scholar, describes the social environment in which Paul lived in. This society can be summed up with one word, impoverished. About nine out of 10 people live close to the subsistence level or below it. There was no middle class the state did not show much concern for the poor. Therefore, inequality and stability and disability to improve one's social status were based on honor and shame, culture and religion. But this is under the democratic yet cruel rule of the Roman Empire. This is on top of working around 12 hours a day, listen, with an income tax of 30 to 50 percent. So a Jewish laborer who's tried and tested working that much, that hard, is like working in a war-torn country absolutely worse than your working condition. Kaya nga, um, kung iisipin natin yung background ng 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth, perhaps, by thinking how a Jewish laborer lived in that time would somehow deepen your understanding. Um, alam kong mahirap ang trabaho sa Pinas. Um, pero magtrabaho ng panahon ni Apostol Pablo ay mas mahirap. 
alam ko na mahirap trabaho na naka full suit against the pandemic uh, pushing yourself to the limits hindi ko alam kung may choice ka pero because of high demand at mababa ang sweldo at mataas ang tax kaya kahit pa paano makaka-relate ka dito sa sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo pero sa tingin ko uh, may mga pagkakataong kinakailangan mong pasalamat kay Bigan at ikaw ay may trabaho sa Pinas kasi marami sa mundo alam naman natin walang trabaho o mas mahirap ang condition nila. Tulad ng panahon ni Apostol Pablo. Now, I mentioned about Paul quoting philosophy and you can read that in scripture. Interestingly, as accounted in Acts 17.28 in Areopagus, before the High Council of Athens, Paul quotes the Greek philosopher and poet Aratus. He lived around um, 300 years before Christian era, before Christ. You can read Paul saying, oh, you can turn your Bible to Acts 17.28. Magugulat ka. Because this phrase, we are his offspring, okay, is taken from phenomena, a most widely read form in the ancient world, including the time of Paul. But perhaps second only to Iliad and Odyssey. It's probably informed by Cleanthes, writer of the hymn in joy. Cleanthes is an important figure in the development of Stoicism. It focuses on virtues and ethics. And in this day and age, being Stoic means keeping calm under pressure and avoiding emotional extremes. With this backdrop, we can somehow better understand presenting oneself to God as an approved worker. Now, um, I mentioned about stoicism, being stoic. Kung ikaw ay uh, laging kalmado at um, even under pressure, even working more than 12 hours, hours a day um, and having baggage at home at mahirap pang bumiyahe, papunta sa trabaho and so on, but you still keep your calm, uh, yun ang isa sa mga virtues ng being stoic. At um, ginamit ito ni Apostol Pablo para ipakita idiin what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a worker for God? That's why he quoted that we are his offspring. Kasi nung binanggit niya ito, naiintindihan ito ng, nandun sa, sa Athens, sa Greece. Because this is a byword, famous slogan in their time. So he used this as a platform to introduce Jesus Christ to introduce the gospel. Sabi niya, okay na, um, you have this wonderful mindset, you are Stoic, or you Badunay, Epicureans, which I'll be dealing um, with uh, in a couple of days. But Christianity is more than that. Yun, uh, mababasa mo sa gawa di siyete. Now, Paul's conception of a worker is twofold. What are those? Spiritual worker avoids irreverent babble. What was that? Be ignorant. 
uh, of the truth and dealing with controversies. Swerving from the truth. And what's the truth? That's centered on what God has accomplished for humanity in and through Jesus Christ. So in order to be an honorable worker, be ready for every good work by having nothing to do with foolish words and deeds. This is Paul's advice to his apprentice, Timothy. And obviously, you can see that it's also applicable to us. Alam place, hindi maiwasan us, or bad thoughts. Uh, but the Apostle Paul is saying, have nothing to do with it. Kung chinichismis ka, don't retaliate. If someone bad, bad mouth you, or sa Philippines ay backbiting, don't do that as well. Rather, do otherwise. Um, panalangin mo pa siya at magsabi ka ng magaganda kung meron man um, mga adjectives about that person or just stay calm <laughs> and be gentle alam kong hindi madaling gawin ito pero that's why we have this motif transcend like a worker and you can do so by the Spirit's power, like Jesus Christ, isn't it? Siya ay very non-combative. Si Jesus ay very gentle. At wala siyang panahon sa mga chismis o paninira o negative thoughts. Rather, he turn the tables around to make it positive, constructive. Um, ito ang um, advice ni Apostol Pablo kay Timoteo bilang kanyang tutor na tatalakayin natin bukas. Uh, pero ito ay para sa atin din, para sa iyo, kaibigan. Maging sa akin. Kaya nga maganda yung awit kanina na we were all sinners, but Christ has redeemed us by coming down from the throne of grace to give us grace. Pressured ka na sa trabaho, may friction pa amongst your colleagues, at pag mo, wag naman sana, ay may problema ka pa sa bahay o problema sa budget. I know it's very challenging. Maging dito sa Australia, um, uh, it's been very much affected by the pandemic. Hindi naman na iba yung sitwasyon namin dito sa sitwasyon yung dyan sa Pinas. Pero kahit saan ka mang bahagi ng mundo, ikaw na nanonood ngayon, um, transcend like a worker. Like a Jewish worker in Paul's time by keeping calm. Uh, yeah. Although you're under pressure by thinking that you're a Christian and let the Holy Spirit help you reflect Christ's character amidst those challenges. In other words, you can best present yourself to God as an approved worker by being what? A pleasant Christian employee. Uh, alam ko nagtatrabaho ko sa Adventist Institution. Kung ikaw ay nasa AMCM, ay nasa MAC. O kung ikaw ay part ng MACC, the Mac Church, I miss Mac Church. Um, you're in a quite healthy and friendly atmosphere, environment. Pero paano kung ang mga katrabaho mo ay uh, hindi tunay na Christian? Paano kung ang workplace mo ay hindi ideal? 
o marami sabi mo kahit nga dito sa Adventist institution eh, you're experiencing that um, I have nothing to add to it all I can say is that there's a way through this hardship uh, by focusing on the virtues and ethics in scripture so a pleasant christian employee i would say is someone principled and sorry on my screen go principled and upright as opposed to being quarrelsome and deceitful Alam kong madali lang uminit ang ulo pag ikaw ay in full gear. <laughs> Alam kong madali lang uminit ang ulo kung ikaw ay nagtrabaho na for more than 12 hours. O ikaw ay poyat, pagod, o naisip mo ay ikaw ay underpaid. But you know what? That's why we have this spiritual emphasis to remind us that there's still hope um, amidst your work condition by being principled and upfront. What does it mean? Um, kung ano yung usual reaction mo o ng mga taong nakapaligid sa'yo, ibahin mo yon. Hindi mo ito magagawa if not with the help of the Spirit. If God has not given you power to be a Christian, like Jesus Christ. And stay upright. Um, maintain your dignity. Kahit na sa tingin mo ay uh, you're being exploited o kaya ay hindi mo na kaya. God is with you. Kung sakasakaling matitem ka na maging quarrelsome, <laughs> Uh, to do the same negatively, please don't. Um, sabi nga, you pray, at least count one to ten, meditate on Christ. And avoid nonsense talking, nonsensical topics. Rather, uh, build everyone up. Kung puro nahihila ka sa paligid mo, Try to change the situation um, with, with a simple smile, kahit mahirap siguro, o yung wala kang sasabihin masama, just keeping quiet, um, it's a big deal already. You are calm in the shalom despite under pressure of work and family life. These are the virtues of a child of God resembling the Son, Jesus. Kita mo nga si Jesus Christ. Ano mang negative ang sabihin sa kanya? He kept quiet. Ano mang gawin sa kanya? Saktan siya in words and indeed actions. He didn't do the same. He kept it to himself with his Father. So I suppose by looking at Jesus, we will know what it means to transcend like a worker. Thanks for listening.